Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be continuing to work on our ability system for the mage in particular. So let's just jump into it from where we were last, which was that we set up some apex uh, events for us to react to, where we could actually say that the, the spell is uh, starting to happen. Now, uh, going to our abilities and opening up the, the base class, I can actually close everything else here. Uh, this is the event that we, we created over here, the animation apex event. And we demonstrated how easy it is to add to a existing montage by adding it to a montage for the slash. Now we want to create it for the mage, which has a few different animations. So going to one of them, let's take the um, standing magic attack, this one. And let's say we want to have it uh, use the spell over here. So we'll right click, add the notify, BPI, Apex ability notify over so. Uh, we also, actually let's remove that, my bad. This is not a montage, this is an animation that I opened up, wasn't it? Yes it is. So let's create a montage from it first. Uh, it, you can add uh, these uh, notifies to animations as well. Uh, just know then that if you were to have uh, a notify in here like like this like if, if we just add it properly first so somewhere there add notify and if you also have added it to your normal animation the montage uses all of the notifies and things that you have in the animation as well so things would happen twice then essentially which may be what you're after but probably not I'm going to assume Anyway, so we have the Apex Ability Notify over there. And now we want to make use of this by creating an ability. So we go to Abilities and we create a child. Child Blueprint class, we'll call this one BP underscore, let's call it Fireball. Okay, so starting off, we need to set an anime montage, which is going to be our standing magic attack, like so. So that's the first part. Now, the next part is we want to actually do something when this happens. So to have the debug available or to see that this is working, we'll add the apex event to our graph and we'll say print apex exclamation marks like so. Uh, next step is we need to actually have this ability available to our character. So even though this character is a warrior, uh, we will add it to his abilities anyway. Uh, so the animations won't be 100% awesome because it's a little bit of a mismatch when it comes to its locomotion and stuff, but that's fine. It will do some uh, blending between them, so it shouldn't be too awful. Uh, actually, let's remove the multi-slash so we have fireball on our second ability which is uh, let's see here was it the q key uh, r key okay that's good so let's see what happens when we try this out so we play and we press the r key we do the animation and we type out apex afterwards everything is looking fine so far okay um, now, what we want to achieve in this is uh, we want to spawn a projectile. So, uh, we could become, actually, let's, why do we keep this? Let's remove this. Let's, we could be spawning a projectile directly in here if we wanted to. Uh, if we want to have it more organized, like uh, things are more uh, centered around what they're actually doing, we could instead uh, distribute this action to our combat system and say that the ability generates a, a projectile, but the actual combat um, component is what what creates and sends it out, or spawns or sends it out, essentially. It's a matter of your preference, of course, how you want to organize your things, but 
what we could do then is we know that this is happening we can get uh, owner and we can say um, get component by class and then we can say we want to have the um, combat component and then we can have something that spawns the, the projectile but we currently don't have anything like that so let's start off with doing that we open up our combat component which now has a lot of uh, comments here in case you didn't follow the commenting uh, video um, and let's see here is I feel it might have actually become a slightly harder to <laughs> navigate in this with all the comments, but that might just have been me putting up poor comments, essentially. Uh, so we have a damage taken, we have a begin play, we have uh, some random things here. What we want to have is essentially a... Let's create a custom event for this. And let's call this um, spawn... Um, mm -mm fire projectile and this is what we will be calling from our class then so going back to fireball we can now say uh, fire projectile but we don't have any projectiles created so let's get working on that so let's go to hmm, where should we place the projectile i wonder Let's place it under abilities for now and see if we have a better place for it later. So we'll create a blueprint, which we'll call a actor and we'll call this BP projectile base. Opening that up, this is what we have. We remove the tick and begin overlap and stuff. <clears throat> uh, what we want to do first is we want to have some kind of a um, well, first of all, we want to add projectile uh, movement to it so that component is available here. In addition to that, we want to create a component that represents our projectile just so we have it visually seen. So we can add a static mesh. And uh, as a mesh, I guess we can put something like a sphere makes sense for a fireball. We don't have a sphere. We do not seem to have a sphere. Is that not available unless you have the starter content, I wonder? Uh, let's just hack up a static mesh. Um, so going here under basics for place actors, we can get a sphere like so. We can click the little lock so it keeps its dimensions. We can say 0 0.1. That's maybe a little bit small. Let's try 0 0.3. That looks like an okay fireball, I guess. And then we can just right click on this, convert sphere to static mesh. We can place it, meshes is fine. We'll just call it static mesh sphere, like so in meshes okay now we have a mesh here and uh, this one will not have any collision so we'll create some simple collision not entirely sure it added it to be honest let's see if there we go that looks somewhat off-center. Weird. Uh, it seems to be moving as well as we move the camera, which is also very weird. Okay. Now it is inside of the mesh, which is something, I guess. Let's scale it up a little bit so it's slightly larger, so we can see it. Uh, that should do fine for us, I think. So let's just save that and close that down. And now we say we want to have a static mesh of SM Sphere, like so. 
and now we have our sphere. So this is what we will be using as our projectile then essentially. Uh, we can move this one to our default scene root and we can, so it overwrites the root over there. It's good. So let us see, let's go to our projectile movement and we may want to set initial speed is zero. That's not very fast. We might want to change that, but before we do that, we want to at least set the gravity scale to zero because these are going to be fireballs that are not affected by gravity. You might want to have gravity in your game, that's perfectly fine. Uh, for me, I will not. Um, so let's keep it like this for now. So this means it will be spawning, it will not be moving because it has zero speed and it will uh, not be affected by gravity. That's fine for now. Let's go to our fireball and say, no, we go to our mm, 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 combat component and then we say uh, spawn actor from class and we say we want to have the projectile base. And we can expand the transform so it will be spawning in zero zero zero. Uh, da, 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 da. All of this is fine for now, I believe. So let's try this out and see what happens. So uh, we press the R key, we do our ability. We don't know that something has happened, but if you check over here in the world outliner, we can see that the fireball has been spawned. And if we eject from here and we go to, where did you go? There we go, and press F. No, that doesn't center it. Is this where it is? There it is. That seems to be a much larger fireball than what I expected. They did not take the scale into consideration for the static mesh, I wonder. Okay, so first of all, uh, this one we need to get rid of because we don't want this one. So that's fine. Um, but at least the fireball spawned. Now we can say, uh, let's do this a little bit hacky because this doesn't really matter. Here we would, this is just for visualization right now. Um, set actor scale 3d and let's set all of these to 0 0.3 so compile run let's do that again let's see we will eject we will check the fireball it is smaller that looks good uh, that will be fine for our visual representation, I guess. We can um, can make it look a little bit fancy, I guess, if we have some material that looks cool, which we don't seem to have. I guess we'll keep a white ball for now. Uh, yeah, so next part will be to actually uh, spawn this in the right locations, have it move and things like that. Sorry about that, I accidentally closed down the, the engine. Uh, anyway, uh, all of that I guess we can start off on the next episode. I think this is good for now, so hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.